an attitude that's very prevalent societally is that you have a personal style and that it's not sort of governed by what you do as much as whether the conditions of learning sort of fit your style. And if they do, if the teacher will only present the material in a way that meshes with your learning style, there are no effort on your part of required. Learning will just kind of happen. This is very prevalent attitude, namely that sort of how you learn, what you can learn, what, you're, what you can be good at, what you're bad at, is almost like predetermined by your innate abilities. And I think it has a bunch of costs. It leads people to underestimate their learning capacities. It leads people to give up on whole domains of learning, like let's say mathematics, based on some early test. They decide that's not their thing. So you spend a lot of time looking for the domain that's your thing, that fits your learning style. And as a matter of fact, learning styles is an enormous industry in our country. Um, people sell documents and inventories to determine what your learning style is. Whole programs try to construct the conditions of learning to match the individual person's style. It's very appealing to people. The only problem is there's no evidence for it. So I was one of a four-person team that reviewed all the available evidence on learning styles, and it simply doesn't have a research foundation. It's counterproductive in several ways, namely it leads people to just assume that they shouldn't go into certain domains, maybe because they think their family's not good at it, their ethnic group is not good at it, and so on. And so in that sense, it's very counterproductive in limiting where people go, what they try to do, and stuff. But it's understandable at the same time why it's so appealing. On the one hand, we all love to feel we're individuals. And I could talk to you about your learning style, you can talk to me about yours, and people like to talk about that endlessly. Another dimension is suppose you're not doing as well as you want in some context, or your child isn't doing as well, what's the problem? Well, it's not your problem or your child's problem, it's that the people, the teachers, aren't teaching in a way that meshes with your style or whatever. So it has that benefit of being able to kind of uh, point the finger at somebody else if you're not doing very well. But I just think there's a whole body of research now that relates closely to the important work by Carol Dweck and others on having what kind of mindset do you have? Do you have a growth mindset? Meaning that you can grow intellectually, you can learn, you can master things? Or do you have a fixed mindset? Namely that you come equipped with a certain set of innate talents, they're the limiting factors. You'll be good at things that mesh with those and not with others. And really one key is just to realize simply the the, the power of humans as learners. Without, without some true organic damage, the power we all have to learn is just pretty amazing. Um, and we'll often, you often have cases like some kid who's on probation, almost flunking out of school, has certain domains, maybe popular music, maybe cars and automobiles, who knows what, where they know everything. They've acquired everything in that domain. And that illustrates their learning capacity. It's an other kind of problem. It's not a problem of capacity of learning. And so the, the whole learning styles, that there's something that I, you know, that I should spend my time trying to see where I have the gift, where learning will just happen. I won't have to expend much effort on my part. Uh, it's a very counterproductive idea and a very prevalent idea.